Today, we're going to learn about linked layers in Photoshop. My name is Max Bridge. I'm a still life photographer based in London. You can find me on my website, squaremountain.co.uk and on Instagram at square underscore mountain. So what are linked layers? Well, imagine you have a master Photoshop document. Within that document, you have a number of linked layers. These layers reference external Photoshop documents with their own layers, photos, adjustments, everything. When you update those external documents, those updates are then populated into the master document. So why would you want to do this? Well, complicated composites can be pretty strenuous on your computing power. By splitting the document up into multiple documents, you save on that power and it allows you to make far more complicated edits. On top of that, you've got organization. Now, personally, I'm massive on organization when I'm making complicated composites because it can get quite confusing having loads and loads and loads of layers within the same document. Link layers allow you to split that up into multiple documents, so it's much, much easier. And finally, my favorite part of this is that rather than having to merge layers when you want to do things like liquefy a whole bunch of things, you don't have to do that. You can click on the linked layer and you can go back to all of your edits, but in your master file, you can liquefy that linked layer and still go back and edit those adjustments later on. Now, honestly, linked layers are the best Photoshop technique I have learned in recent years, and that's no exaggeration. Now let's go into Photoshop and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now we're inside Photoshop, let me just take you through linked layers really quickly. So I'll just start by doing a really, really simple example using some shapes. So we'll create a shape, a square with a red fill. There we go. Uh, and then I'll create a new document by hitting Control or Command N. Create the new document window. And then we hit U for the shape tool again. Shift U to cycle through them. I'll create a circle with a purpley kind of color there we go and then again another new document control or command n and then shift u to create another one and this one we'll color in and this sort of thing really doesn't matter all right, there we go. Uh, so now we have to save our elements first. This is our master document, and these are our, our elements going into it. So I'll just hit Control or Command S to save. You see, I've already got a little folder here. That's our master one. It doesn't matter what the name is for now, so I'll just hit save. And then we'll just go to the next document by hitting Control or Command Tab, Control S. And that brings up the next one, save this one. Now, as you can probably tell, I use quite a lot of shortcuts. Um, if I forget to say, then I use a PC and Control on a Mac would be Command, Alt on a Mac would be Option. I'll do my best to try and remember them. Okay, so these are now saved and we want to reference them in our master document. We go File, Place Linked right here. And we click on our first one, place that in. And then click on our second one, do the same, file place linked and place it in. Now you'll notice you have this bounding box. Um, I wouldn't recommend increasing the size of that because just like any other image, if you increase the size of it, you're actually lowering the quality. The pixels aren't there for you to increase the size. Just like if you took a photo and you decided to increase the size of it, you're, you're actually lowering the quality. So I just suggested to leave it the size it is. You can make it smaller, but I wouldn't recommend making it any bigger. Okay, so there we go. We have our link layers in our master document. You see this little symbol down here on the layer? That tells us it is a linked layer so if i click on this it'll take us to that document if i go back and i click on this one it takes us to that document so now if i make any changes to this if i add say a curves layer and just darken this down just so you can see i save that we see it's saving up here it then updates into here and you see it is now darker in this document as well you see in the uh, history panel here, we can see it updated. And this is an important point to make as well. You see this little icon that has appeared over here and appeared here on the layer. If you have made a change within your document and you've saved it, but it's not appearing in the master, it has this little icon that says, hey, I don't know what's going on. There's been a change made, but I can't see it. All you have to do is go back into that original document, save it, 
and then it will work here. Now I can just go down the history because that was the only reason it was doing that. But if you have that problem, just make sure you go back to the external document, save that one, and it should be fine. It's just because it's confused that there's been changes made and it's not referencing it. Um, now, other point to make here is when you use linked layers, it references the entire document. It's not just the layer you're on, it's the entire document. So as you can see here, because we have a background, it's also taking the background here, whereas the layer, the shape layer on our master document you, hit, you see here, it has a transparent background. I can move it around, but these ones actually end up hiding it because they have their own backgrounds. So when you're making link layers, when you're using them, remove the backgrounds, just have them as the actual elements themselves. So we delete those, I save them both, Control or Command S, and I'm using Control or Command Tab just to go between the windows, much, much quicker than uh, going up and selecting these little things here. So as you can see, they updated, they went from having backgrounds to not having backgrounds, and now we can move them around and do whatever we want with them, just like as though they were a normal layer. And now let's go back into this little circular shape and I'll make another change. So let's say I want to add, it doesn't really matter, a color balance layer. I'm just going to fiddle around with these parameters, which are doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, okay, let's add something else. <laughs> really doesn't matter what we add. Uh, let's go for levels and darken it again that way. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I'll add a new blank layer. And I'll get this clone stamp and I'll clone a little bit of this edge. You know, literally, it doesn't matter at all what I'm doing here. This is just for demonstration purposes. And then I'll copy that over to the other side and give our circle some strange hat. Um, anyway, there we go. <laughs> Group those layers. So the point here is just that we can make all of these changes, hit save, and they update into our master document. Now, the really interesting thing is when we want to liquefy or make further changes. Now, rather than doing this in this way, which is quite boring, uh, I'm gonna show you on a composite I actually did a little while ago. So let's close these down, and I will just open up those files. Now these will take a moment to open. Um, I have actually just recently changed them to 8-bit just for this video, just so they open a little bit quicker. Usually I work in 16-bit and Profoto RGB, um, so this stuff tends to take a little bit longer to open. Um, but it's a good moment just to point out that if you're doing linked layers, I recommend working in PSDs, not TIFFs. Now you can see here, I have been working in TIFFs on this particular file, but I have been doing this technique for a little while. Uh, and since doing this composite, I've found that if you work in TIFFs, sometimes it can cause a bit of a, a penalty in terms of speed. Um, PSDs tend to work a little bit better. I'm not exactly sure why, they just do. Okay, so let me just take you through this and then I can really demonstrate how amazing linked layers are. So this composite is made up of three elements. We have the bubbles in the background, which you can see here with that link layer. We have the clouds, all of these nice little cloud bits, which are in this link layer down here. And then we have the bottle itself, which is in this link layer here. Um, now, all of these are edited, their individual elements are edited in the individual files. So we have the bottle PSD, we have the bubble PSD, which as you'll see, has no background, but I'll just add one so you can see it. So we see we have the bubble PSD, uh, and then we have the cloud PSD, which also has no background. I'll just add that. Now, if you're wondering how I just did that, Control Alt Shift N or Command Option Shift N creates a new layer. If you hit Control and then the, I don't even know what the name of them are, uh, on my keyboard next to Enter, it's the symbols that are kind of like a, uh, <laughs> like bookends almost, I guess. I'll, I'll add some kind of image so you can see what I'm talking about. But Control and then using those, you can move a layer around. You see? Uh, anyway, so <laughs> I've added that background and there we have the clouds layer here, we have the bubbles and we have the bottle. Now look at the number of layers contained within just this clouds document. There are loads of them. We have the clouds, the clouds themselves and then all the adjustments I made to them. The bubbles doesn't really have very many layers. 
Um, but when I'm doing composites, I like to split everything up because it just seems to make logical sense. Having everything in linked layers just makes sense to me. It makes everything so much easier when I'm going around and trying to find layers and trying to find adjustments that relate to something. It's all contained within its own little area, its own PSD. Uh, then we have the bottle comp. Now, this bottle was made up of nine different images just to get the composite of the bottle done. Uh, so let me show you. So we started with, I hide everything, started with that, uh, and then we had loads of different images. This is the main part of the comp here. Uh, loads of different images for the label. So I'll just toggle them on and off quickly, just so you can see. I mean, this isn't a tutorial on this image. I just want to give you an idea of the complexity of the composites that I'm doing, and then how link layers help. Uh, so each one of these layers refers to a different part on this bottle. And then when they're all added together, we get the final bottle look, which is that. Okay. Uh, and then we have all of the other layers for cleaning, contrast, color corrections, all these things. There are tons of layers. Now, imagine all of those layers from that document, that document, that document. And then on top of that, all the layers in here, which unify all of that, the unifying layers, which make the composite look real. So you've got the shadows for the bottle to make the clouds look like they're engulfing it. Uh, you have the clouds over the top of the bottle to make it look as though they're coming around the top of it. And then we have a color bounce. Really important in composites actually is, is color. Um, so if these clouds are actually coming over this bottle, and then this blue highlight wouldn't really be blue. They'd be getting some color from the clouds, that brown. So you see when I toggle this on and off, you see you're getting a bit of brown on the edge of the bottle there. Really important little tip for composites. But anyway, so we have shed loads of layers. Layers in, in the master document for blending everything together, together and all the layers in all these different Photoshop documents. Can you imagine the powerful computer you would need <laughs> to do all of that and then still be able to zoom in like I am now and move around without it mucking up. Now, if any of you are new to composites, then you'll probably know once you get past 66.7% on the zoom down here, uh, I don't know why, but it, it, it'll, it'll lag. It'll kind of duck, stop, and then go forward, and then you'll be trying to move around. It'll be like, uh, 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 uh. Now, that's because your computer is not powerful enough. Uh, it's, it's you know, not got a good enough graphics card, whatever it is, not enough RAM, processing power. I don't know. I'm not a computer person. Um, so anyway, by doing link layers, it splits everything up, and it just makes it a lot more a lot easier on your computer. So if you have a, a less powerful computer, you're still able to do these complex composites without worrying about the computing power. Uh, then we have the organization standpoint. And finally, my favorite, favorite part of this is the ability to liquefy and make adjustments to groups of layers without having to merge. So let's say we were doing this all, this whole edit on the one document, and we start with our bottle, we edited our bottle, uh, and then we had to we wanted to liquefy it because, you know, usually when you get a product, yeah, you see, <laughs> when you get a product, it is rarely perfect. Um, you make all of your cleaning adjustments and everything else with your contrast adjustments. And then you start to do what I do anyway. Uh, I start to liquefy edges to make it perfect. So as you see here, I've got loads of guides up. Uh, and if I move these around, you will see that every area of this bottle is perfect. The label is perfect there, lines up on either side lines off on either side there, that's straight. The top of the bottle is straight. These areas are perfect in terms of where the neck is lining up. The edges here are perfect. Every single element on this has been made perfect and that was no accident. That did not happen on its own. <laughs> the bottle definitely didn't come like that. It wasn't far off to be fair, but it did not come like that. I had to do that. And the usual process would be you'd make all of your adjustments, you do your comp, you do everything else, and then you'd hit Control Alt Shift N to create a new layer, or Control Option Shift N, and then again Control Alt Shift E or Control Option Alt Control Option Shift E to create a stamp visible layer. Okay, so that is now there, and that contains all the information from everything within here. And then you'd make your adjustments, you do liquefy or whatever you're going to do um, to that whole layer because you couldn't without doing that you could not liquefy all of this but you can with linked layers so let's go back to our master document i go to our bottle here and i hit Control shift x or command shift x to get us to liquefy and now i'm just going to make this bottle into a little weird shape bailey's new shape for christmas 
It's not. Don't <laughs> don't quote me on that. Uh, and there we go. Make the bottle bigger because everybody wants more Baileys. There we are. So I've ruined the shape of the Baileys bottle, <laughs> changed it. Now you can see it's not quite working here now because some of these clouds over the top aren't really sitting right. But that's not about that. This is about the edit in the linked layer. So I've done the liquify and you see it's liquefied here. If I go back to the bottle comp, it has not affected that. That is still exactly how it was. What happens is it references all of that in this document and then you can make changes to this layer, things like liquify or any other filter you want to apply and it doesn't affect everything here. So I can go back if I want to and I can change any adjustment that I've made before and then save it and it goes back over here. Okay? I mean, to me, that was such a revelation when I learned it. But let me just show you something else. So let me just show you it in action. Let's say I wanted to add a highlight to this bottle. So I make a new layer, I hit control and click on that layer. Now because I've already cut this bottle out, I already have a mask. If you hit control or command and click on any mask, it selects that mask. So I'm just doing that because I've already got this. You may not, but I do, so I'm going to cheat. Gradient, mm -mm -mm -mm. oh, there we go, select that layer. Create a gradient, there we are. Control or Command D to deselect that. Control or Command T to transform it. I'm just gonna nudge it in a bit. And then we're gonna blur it, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now I have a shortcut created for that. If you wanna do that, go edit, mm, keyboard shortcuts, find it in here and then create your own. It's a lot, lot quicker. I use Gaussian blur all the time. So I created that shortcut. There we go, blur it by about 20. Uh, and then I'm going to lower the opacity to 50 and I'm going to add a mask to it. Hit G for the gradient tool again. X to switch around these. So I'm painting, oh no, sorry, X painting with white. I want to invert my mask first. So Control or Command I to hide the mask. You see it was white there, now it's black. So I've inverted the mask and now I'm going to paint back on just to make that really, really soft and maybe raise the opacity to like 60 or something. Yeah, I wonder if a blend mode would be nice, something like lighten. Mm. That's not really making a difference. Ah, okay, so we do that and then I'm going to duplicate it, Control or Command J, Control or Command T to transform it, right click and then go flip horizontal and I'm going to add that onto the other side of this bottle. So there we go, we have these two little highlights, I'll just group them together by hitting Control or Command G. And there we go, we have these highlights. I've made an adjustment to our bottle. Now if I save this, you'll see it save here. And then when it gets toward the end, you'll see another bar. I tend to be staring at bars all day, watching them move along. There we go. So then it's updating this smart object over in here. There we go. So you see, you see those highlights appeared? And you see in our history, it updated the smart object. It updated the linked layer. All right, I hope you found that tutorial on linked layers really useful. If you did, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. I'm gonna be making loads more videos on still life photography and Photoshop in general. So hit that subscribe button and then you won't miss any of it. Now, if you've got any questions, chuck them in the comments below and I'll answer them as quick as I can. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.